speaking of innovation, um, from New Zealand we have Danny Duchamp, and this is a man who um, gets drunk and sits in his car with a camera rolling and, uh, and, and makes some great videos. So uh, he's also got a growing platform. Come on up, Danny. Give it up to Danny. So uh, you've certainly taken a, a unique approach to uh, your style, and I think style is, is such a huge factor in uh, mm. YouTube content creation. You know, we each have our own style and approach. Um, how did you come to decide to sit in your car with a bottle of wine and, and, and talk into a camera? Oh, well, the car was because um, I didn't want to make too much noise and annoy everyone. But the making the video in the first place was, uh, you'll never believe this, someone was wrong on the internet. <laughs> and. I had to do something about it. So um, <laughs> I made a, a video response. Someone subscribed and said they liked it, so I kept doing it. Uh, the initial thing I responded to, by the way, was um, a group that's been touched on a couple of times, uh, uh, affectionately referred to as social justice warriors. Um, and it was largely, uh, it largely grew out of the Gamergate movement, um, which, yeah, um, a few people probably have already heard of that, and um, there was a quick rundown of it, but I just had a, a couple of um, headlines from around the time that I wanted to uh, read out here that will give you sort of an idea of um, what the games journalism uh, sphere was saying about um, gamers at the time, keeping in mind that this is simply in response to them asking for ethical um, standards in games journalism. Uh, gamers don't have to be your audience. Gamers are over. It's dangerous to go alone, so why are gamers so angry? The end of gamers. Sexism, misogyny, and online attack. It's horrible time to consider yourself a gamer. The death of gamers and the women who killed them. Uh, we might be witnessing the death of an identity. Gaming is leaving gamers behind. It goes on and on like this. Um, there's an enormous list that I could have kept going with. I'd also like to point out that every single one of those was released on the same day. So these. These aren't just um, uh, some specific ideologues in specific places who are you know, de trying to demonize a certain group. This is actually appears to be some kind of a coordinated thing, meaning that these um, different media sources have some sense of collusion with them. And I think that's kind of where alternative media uh, comes in. With alternative media, you have a much more uh, granular uh, sort of approach to media. You know, there's all of the different um, people won't necessarily um, know each other. They won't necessarily be um, in the same area. So there's a lot more opportunity to start um, breaking the mold and trying to do something a little bit different, not going along with the same narrative as your colleagues. And after a while um, of seeing that, I guess uh, eventually, and seeing that person who was wrong on the internet, I eventually just sort of cracked and I had to say something. <laughs> Now, one thing that, um, that I've noticed over this weekend, and, and uh, Naomi Brockwell pointed it out um, quite rightly when she won her award last night, was that um, this bunch of people, um, libertarians, are, seem to be so light. It, it, maybe it's particular to Australia, but there's a light-heartedness to um, the positions that we uh, can take online, and you certainly embody that, um, even in your um, serious rants that where you've you know, sometimes scripted them or really thought them through and they're quite cogent, but you bring a lightheartedness to it mm. that I think is quite appealing when on the opposite side you've got a whole lot of um, shrieking that, yes. uh, <laughs> and a whole lot of seriousness and a whole lot of like those, those headlines really highlight just how miserable the, uh, the other side can be on these topics. And, and I, I wanted to talk about um, the musical aspect um, that, that you uh, have engaged with and, and that that's a movement uh, as well in, in the free thought um, yeah. projects on YouTube. So a couple of times, um, because I used to do a bit of uh, professional musicking, uh, I tried to develop a little bit of um, a use of music in my videos, just making fun of someone with a parody song, things like that. And I think a lot of that lightheartedness does really um, help. It also speaks to um, what you heard before about the really different demographics that there are um, in sort of the online community. And it's worth noting that this isn't all necessarily libertarians, right? Like all of the people responding to like, your social justice warrior types, they aren't all necessarily libertarians. But a common name that's given to them is actually cultural libertarian. Right? And it's not a huge jump to pull people over from cultural libertarian to real libertarian. 
if someone is already upset about like the underhanded tactics that um, uh, some rabid feminists will use to try to get them deplatformed, you know, the protests and things like that, instead of having a debate, getting them deplatformed, it's not a hard move to say, well, you know, the ultimate form of deplatforming is when you start using government force to do that. And so I, I think that the, the, all of the different demographics that are in sort of that um, anti-social justice, Gamergate, um, alternative <coughs> media, or even just social media um, sphere, they're all ripe for uh, conversion to libertarianism. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And I think on the, on the topic of um, the music and the parody side of things, it, it reminds me of uh, something that uh, Judd Weiss said the other night, um, and I was lucky enough to spend some time with him and interview him yesterday and go a bit more deeply into it. But we talked about um, the cruciality for the libertarian movement of, um, of making it sexy, as he put it, but I think making it fun, making it um, engaging in a, in a light way that um, you know, brings, brings more people on board because we're not such a bunch of sourpuss, serious, sit around and bitch and moan and deplatform people. Yeah. We want to exchange ideas, we want to have fun in the process of doing it, and we want to be passionate about it. And uh, I think all of us on this panel, uh, we're little guys comparatively, but we're, we're all doing it and we're all coming from that place of this is something we're passionate about. Mm. We all have um, businesses and lives and families outside of this, so we just put in the time that we can. Um, but it's a growing movement and, you know, I mean, that we are putting our passion into something on a whim and then getting invited to come along to an event like this, which is full of so many like-minded people, it's just absolutely uh, fantastic. Thank you um, very much for the opportunity to speak to you guys. Um, I want to pass over to Sven one more time for his uh, closing notes, and then uh, we might open it up for some questions and answers. Uh, I'm probably supposed to be using the Hoover app to do that, but um, as I said, we're rugged individualists. We're just going off script and doing it our way. So we've got some hand mics, and if anyone has a question, just put your hand up, and I'll bring a mic out and let us know who you want to speak to, and I can repeat the question into the recording microphone here. Uh, but yeah, Sven. Take it away, my friend. Oh, great. All right, we're going to try this one off the cuff. Um, so, like I said, I haven't had a TV in 10 years, so all my media consumption pretty much has been YouTube. Um, and I've gained so much in that, like it's, it's why I have the beliefs I have today. And there's this idea that, um, like the, tr the tree of knowledge that we have in humanity, and there's these mighty people, like we stand on the shoulders of giants, and maybe Friedman here, he's like the trunk of this tree, but there's space for the people for the little branches and the little leaves and to pass that message on. And I really believe that knowledge confers responsibility. Um, and so it's your duty, you know, and that's how we show our gratitude because, you know, thank you to these people that give us this knowledge and we need to pass it forward. Um, then also, again, I, I've tried to encapsulate these sort of ideas in my bumper stickers and one of them is um, study, practice, teach. Uh, and you know, I'm at the beginning of that. I'm, I'm studying. The practice is making these videos, um, writing the scripts. Uh, another one from Jordan Peterson is that we, we write to know what we think. And you know, I'm, I listen to this stuff, and it lights me up. And I agree. I agree with the stuff, but it's another matter entirely to be able to communicate those things. And so, uh, the other thing is that um, uh, it got touched on by, by Dylan. The, the, the tag was in the age of information, ignorance is a choice, but flip it around, in the age of information, where does that leave us? And again, that comes back to the, the responsibility that we all have is to do our own research and think for ourselves and draw our own conclusions. Um, it's, it's also a paradox of the fact that we have infinite choice with there's so many channels out there, but we still end up in our own little bubbles. It's that confirmation bias thing. So. Yeah, and I, I found it amazing talking to people here over the weekend, and I, I consider myself, like I said, I, I just consume like eight hours of YouTube content a day. Um, you, you can't get to the bottom of it, and I, yet I have these conversations with people, and I, I ask them, you know, who are your sources, who are you into, and they list off 10 YouTube, 10 YouTube channels that I've never even heard of that are their, like, their main thing, the best people. So, yeah, I mean, I really just want to leave you people with, oh, the other one is uh, Courage is Contagious, and I'm, uh, Ezra, Ezra Levant was here, which was kind of mind-blowing for me. He's sort of my hero. And if you haven't seen the, um, the What Is My Intent video, um, <laughs> well, okay. um, so, yeah, so go.
Yeah, thank you. Um, and courage is contagious. I mean, it, it takes a lot of courage to stand up in a room full of people. And um, yeah, so thanks, Ezra. But uh, yeah, check out his video, like, what is my intent you can find on YouTube. And, you know, just light other people's fires, you know? I'm, that's, that's what we're here to do. And yeah, I'm just so excited over this weekend, getting pretty emotional now. So um, yeah. thank, thank you, everyone. Yeah.